Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Behind the Line with Chef Danny Davis, where we discuss cuisine, collabs and cocktails. Hi everybody, Chef Danny Davis here with another episode of Behind the Line and today we're in Fort Lauderdale on a beautiful big boat with a good friend of mine, Mariah Tish. How are you Hi, doing? Hi, I'm Mariah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you it's again. It's been a while, eh? Yeah, it's been think, too long. Yeah, I think the first time I saw you was probably three, four years ago in, in the Bahamas. Yeah, it was a high and by. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it literally it was. Actually a Bahamian, were, and we spent so much time there. Yeah, you were taking the lines off, and we were dropping the lines mm -hmm. on, and it was like, hi, oh, see you later. Yeah, everyone say hi. Yeah, so um, tell me, how did you get into yachting? Well, I was actually um, getting my master's in fashion design. Oh, wow, SCAD. master's degree. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was a personal trainer, and mm -hmm. I was cooking for clients prior to that. And then I decided to follow through with being a fashion designer. So I went to school at SCAD and I met a guy from New Zealand who worked on a yacht and we got into a relationship. And when the uh, school ended, he said, oh, you know, you really love cooking. Why don't you come and join the boat and help pay off your student loans? And that's basically how I got into yachting. So what was your first, first job? You do go straight into chefing or you do something else? Um, it was a stew cook position. Oh, right, stew yeah. cook. Yeah, what but, size boat? 60 meters. 60 meter. Yeah, it was a brand new bed ship. So I got that. Oh, I love whole, bed ships. Yeah, I got yeah. that whole introduction um, of going, you know, joining a yacht while it was in the, um, the yard. In the yard, doing the final stages. Yeah, the final stages and getting it put together. And that's how basically my first boat was 16 meters so it was it was pretty nice it wasn't the usual dock walk situation i got very lucky yeah. to get to this boat mm -hmm. and so then so you spent a lot of time um you, so you did a stew stew uh, chef means you do a bit of both yeah right? i did mostly um our boss had used the boat quite often because it was a new build so there wasn't really too much stew work that i had to do so i just got into the galley and then after a year i just enjoyed it so much that um the relationship didn't work out, so it wasn't really a comfortable position, you know, place for me to be. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going on my first sole, sole chef position. And so you did was, a year. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Andrew, you did That's a year okay. as a, 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 a stew chef, mm -hmm. and then straight into um, mm -hmm. a sole, sole chef. chef. On, yeah. On what size boat? It was uh, forty-two meters. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Private or charter? It was private. Um, the boss, my boss was from Texas and she wanted a chef that, you know, wasn't arrogant, but just kind of getting their feet wet in the industry and they're just so eager to learn and, you know, do new things. And that was my first job. So it worked out perfectly, you know, with my experience and what she wanted and her being from the South. It was just the best job ever. She was like my second mom almost. That's she was awesome. a great owner. So cool. And, mm -hmm. and then you carried on doing different boats or? Well, I stayed on that boat for five years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just liked her so much. And then she ended up selling the boat. And at this time, I got into a relationship with somebody from Italy. Mm -hmm. So um, I worked in a restaurant in Italy for oh, a little wow. bit. And what an education, with him. Hey? Yeah, it was great. You know, having a boyfriend that was Italian and being in Italy and, you know, working in a restaurant. Um, and then from there, I got onto another boat. Uh, they were Irish. So um, I worked on that boat for a season in the Med. And then when the season ended, um, they liked me so much. They said, we're going to kidnap you and take you home with us. And at the time, I wasn't just chefing. I was also their personal trainer. Oh, okay. So it worked out perfectly. So I went, you know, the season ended in August. And I moved to Ireland in September. That's fantastic. So yeah. you um, you say personal training, you're quite into your fitness, aren't you? Yeah. You're yeah. really well known for your fitness. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something that I live and breathe every day. That's It's very important to me to have that balance of being able to exercise and work on boats. You, I mean, you're one of the people that's really inspired me. During uh, during the lockdown and the pandemic and everything, I would see your videos of you working out in the galley. Yeah. And I was like, well, we can do this too. So I started working out in my galley too. So I want to thank you for that. Cause yeah. What I a think massive inspiration. Getting more widespread. People are, you know, using their small spaces for, you know, like a, I call it a jail cell workout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It fits it perfectly because the size of space and sometimes. So, you know. do you have any any races or anything coming up soon? I do. I just finished uh, an ultra marathon last weekend. Wow. So, was, what's an ultra marathon? How many? How it's many just miles? anything over a basic marathon, which is twenty six point two miles. So, what did you do? Um, I did thirty one miles. Thirty one miles. Yeah, because I sprained my ankle around mile eight, 
So um, I had to tape it and just keep going. I didn't really have another choice, but to do that, I wanted to finish. And unfortunately we missed the cutoff time. It was four o'clock to finish the last 18 miles and we missed it. We came in at five o'clock. Because your ankle was bad. Because of my ankle, I kind of just had to get my trail poles out and just hop along on those for a long time. Wow. Yeah. That's some dedication. But it you, is. you lead quite a dedicated life, right? Yeah, you know, the, the thought of quitting just never really occurred to me. Tell me about like a, a, a usual day for you, like out, uh, out at sea or mm -hmm. at anchor or, you know, in the Caribbean somewhere. What's an okay. usual day for you? Well, it depends on um, the guest trip and how many guests that we have on. Um, that's how I kind of choreograph my workouts around that and what I'm able to do. Um, normally, depending on what my exercise goal is, you know, what I'm, Am I working towards a marathon? Am I just lifting for the high rocks? You know what it is. Um, I'll get up at 2.30 or 3 in the morning if I'm training for a marathon and, you know, run 20 miles before I have to get into the galley. I'm very fortunate because my boss, if it's just him and his wife, they have breakfast at 8. So I can easily get a four or five hour run in before, you know, I can kind of slide into the galley. Because yeah. their, their breakfasts are not too much to handle. But... If we have a full house, like 10 or 11 guests on, then um, I normally just get up around 4.35 and smash out like a weightlifting exercise routine and then come into the galley about 6.37, depending on the amount of workload I have to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you just normal kind of yacht chef day. Normal kind of yacht chef day, you know, get in. But it's just you here, right? And this yeah, is a, I'm a This soul is a 60 chef. meter, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. So for me, um, Kind of knowing ahead of time what I'm going to, you know, have the menus ready, having all my provisions ready, um, that helps out a lot. Just being super, super organized, super focused, wake up, just have the um, the intention just to have a sense of urgency throughout the day. Yeah. I kind of just live with that. There's not really a time where I'm just kind of relaxed. I mean, even on my days I off, it's just always you. something to do. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes I think people might be at my downfall, but um, yeah, no, I love it. I'm just I, a very I, focused, I love your posts person. On, on Instagram as well. You know, when Thank you see you. you see that you you have got up at five o'clock in the morning, four mm. o'clock in the morning, and you have done a twenty mile run. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic stuff. I will um, always wake up, no matter what, to train before work. That's that's a given. Now that the time that I wake up is according to what I want to do what kind of workload I want to do for exercise, you know, whether it's run or whether it's just lift. And then if I have a chance around one o'clock after the guests have eaten their lunch, yeah. I'll go for a second workout or a second run that afternoon. Okay. It's just, it's just a matter of what I'm trying to achieve. You know, what my goal is, am I, you know, training for the ultra marathon or just, you know, a high rocks event, which is weightlifting and running. Yeah. So we talked earlier a little bit about your diet and what you, what you eat. Can you, can you explain that a little bit to me? Yeah, I try to focus on mainly just um, having a vegan lifestyle. Um, I do have to cook meat for the boat um, and for the crew. You know, not everyone is a vegan, but for me, yeah. before the season, um, I'll try to prepare some things. And unfortunately, sometimes I'll have to freeze them and then just rewarm them up. Or um, I have a lot of protein shakes that I go to. Yeah. My daily ritual is always getting up and making a fresh juice. And then, you know, making different shots of maybe ginger and turmeric to have throughout the day in the fridge. So will you do that before you go and run? Um, go no, run? no, no. It'll be after I run. I'll okay. come back. I'll juice. I'll have my protein shake. And this is basically all while I'm trying to prepare their breakfast as well. So one of the questions we always ask is yeah. if you could cook for anybody, anybody at all, in history, alive, dead, whatever, who would you cook for and what would you cook for them? Well, because I'm such a diehard athlete, I would have to say David Goggins. David Goggins. Yeah, hero of yeah. mine as well, hey? What right. I'm not really sure what he eats, but just to sit down and talk to him and, and pick his brain, you know. Um, I'm not sure if he's a vegan or not, but I would love to make him one of my high-protein uh, vegan burgers to show him, you know, that you don't necessarily have to eat meat to, you know, get energy from food. I don't know if he'd be on board with that because – but. It could be flexible. You never know. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, where do you see kind of the, the yachting industry going? Is there anything that you'd like to see change or different things that you'd like to see happening? Hmm. Yeah, you know, um, I think it's the recycling, maybe the reduce of uh, waste on boats, but mm -hmm. definitely trying to get more boats on board for recycling, having some kind of a, um, a system for it. Um, helping the crew become more aware, especially these little plastic bags everybody likes to use on the boat. Um, that's, that's what I'd really like the biggest change to be. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the future, 
what I would like to do in a house and Tom off is go work on one of the recycling, you know, the boats that go around and they pick up the plastic. Yeah, that's four you know, I think it'd be boats, like a free gig, but I would like to donate my time. I feel like as chefs, you know, it's um, it's really a, in our best interest to give back, you know. For sure. What we get every day. Yeah, so. I mean, the amount of plastic you have in the kitchen is crazy, isn't it? You know, when yeah. you go provisioning, it comes in plastic bags, everything's some plastics, and we strip all that off to put it into our fridges and store it. Right. And it's a huge amount, isn't well, it? Well, not just that, but we're sometimes in these remote islands, and you have to be very respectful that these people do not have a recycling system. And where is this plastic going to go? Yeah. You know, people say throw out, but where is out? You know, so I think just becoming more aware of that and getting people on board to, uh, to be more consciously aware of that, too. And um, what's next for you? What, what are your what are your plans? Uh, let's see here. I'd like to get more involved in you know my vegan recipes. So maybe taking some plant based courses would be oh, nice. Yeah, yeah abroad. Um, something I need to research. This boat's pretty busy, so um, I haven't had time to really decide where I'm going to do it at. But it's definitely something. And you have a race so coming up soon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a race um, next weekend. Next weekend. Where mm -hmm. you going? It's you in, it? It's in, well, I did one last weekend, but this one is in South Africa. South Africa. Yeah, my boyfriend is from Durban. So we're going to fly to Cape Town, drive to Stellenbosch, and we're going to race in the mountains, in the vineyards. So. Fantastic. What race is it? Is it just it's a, called the Maxi Race. It's Maxi. from France. Mm -hmm. I think marathon. there's about six or eight of them. It's an ultra marathon, so it's 50 miles. 50 miles. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, 46 miles, 75 kilometers. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm well, super excited about it. So you have a, a, a kind of a diet you were telling me about. You want to tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I went to India about six years ago to visit one of my friends. And because I'm so into eating healthy and holistically, she suggested that I go to Kerala to learn about the Ayurvedic diet. So, so that's, that's like a food is medicine, right? Right. Food is medicine. There's a dosha test that you take, which basically tells you, um, it asks you questions about the strength of your hair, um, your energy level, just certain questions like that. And then it sorts out the foods that you should be eating that are that are best beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. So that must be difficult to be vegan and do this diet as well, right? You were telling me earlier you've dropped some of the things out that you yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think cheese is part of it. Naturally, it says that I should be a vegetarian, so that worked well already with the diet that I follow. Um, there is some cheese in it, like paneer, but... Um, I just don't, I just cut that out. I just cut all animal products out of what the diet suggests, and it still works really, really well for me. Yeah. I take a lot of Chinese medicine as well, Chinese herbs for to keep up my nutritional level and my uh, energy level as well. So that's good. That helps a lot. That I found. That's awesome. Getting acupuncture too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so training and, and um, these these huge races that you do. How do you deal with the recovery from that? So. Recovery is very, very essential to me, especially going to the chiropractor because we as chefs, you know, we're on our feet for, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17, you know, many, time. many hours a day. So it's really important that, you know, you have a strong core. Um, so that will help you, you know, sustain these long hours. But when you're on your feet long, you know, you need some extra help. And I find that going to a chiropractor is beneficial to me. Um, it kind of lines me back into you know, back into my well-being, yeah. and uh, I just get a lot of acupuncture treatments. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I've seen some of your, your um, posts with that, with the acupuncture and cups yeah. as well. You use cups. Yeah, I've actually got my own cups on the boat, so I'll do cupping. I have these sleeves, so if I go for a long run, I can just kind of oh yeah, I've seen lay those. in my cabin. Yeah, what do they do? They the pulse, on. pulse your legs. Mm -hmm. and your they they bring the blood back to your back to that area to um, to nourish it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose yeah. you need that though when you've run. Yeah, yeah but miles. they also help too because, you know, being a chef and working these long hours is almost like training in itself because your body, you know, it just takes such a toll on you. Yeah. So I use a lot of my recovery for my training just from being a chef. I have a one of the guns, the Thera guns, so I use that. Um, I ice my body a lot. You'll see you me in mats. here. Yeah, you'll see me in here with an ice pack in my back just, you know, working away. Um, uh, I do a lot of stretching. I have a foam roller. I have equipment in my pantry that I use. Yeah, I saw you got some weights, some kettlebells. Yeah, yeah, I just incorporate that um, to my recovery. I just, you know, just, I try to keep my floors very clean because I never know when I'm going to need to lay on them to <laughs> roll out my back or to stretch. 
that's a good thing about having a, a better size yeah. galley. Tell me a little bit about some of the races that you've done in the last few years. Um, in the last few years, I've pretty much dedicated myself to marathons and the High Rocks race. This is a race from Germany. Um, it's similar to CrossFit. It doesn't have the CrossFit name, but it does have some of the same exercises. Um, we do rowing, we use ski erg, we have um, sled pull, sled push. The sled push for the pro division that I recently did in Spain was over 300 pounds. So, you know, it takes a lot of strength for that. Yeah. So being in the galley, I'll just fill up a pot sometimes and just squat with it. Just squat right there. Yeah, I have my kettlebells, <laughs> but um, that race, um, I did first one in 2019 in Miami, mm -hmm. and I got second for that. Uh, the next one I well did done. was in New York, thank you, and I got second for that, and then I qualified for the World Championship. So unfortunately, that was the year that COVID hit, so um, they kept pushing it back and pushing it back. Uh, then I was able to compete again last April in Dallas, and I came first for my age division. Awesome. And then um, I flew to Germany in December, and I did the pro division, and I placed um, second in that. Fantastic. And you do yeah. all this while working 14-hour days on the boat, right. sole chef, doing right. all the provisioning, all the food for the crew, and all the food for the guests. That's and, right, yeah. Like, how do, you, how, do you make, how do you stretch things? How do you make it work for you? I um, mean, you know, just about being resourceful of what you have and just staying inspired. You know, for me... Going into um, being a vegan, you know, thinking about because I need my vegetables. If that's all I'm going to eat, then I need to figure out how am I going to eat. And so that's when I realized that um, I could take this pulp and dry it out. You know, mix some other things with it, some mushrooms. And how did you dry it out? You got machines? I just, no, I didn't have a dehydrator on that. I just put it in the oven. Straight in the oven? Yeah, straight in the oven, dry it out, and um, mix it with some other vegetables. But that was usually the base of it. And then ground up some bulgur wheat with that, added mm -hmm. it to it. Um, but, you know, I tried to figure out ways that I was going to be creative with not having as much produce as I normally could as a yacht chef. You know, we're pretty spoiled. We get to yeah, we are, get right? whatever we want to get. Get the best stuff. Yeah, but yeah. when you get put in a position where you have to be super resourceful, I think it makes you a stronger chef too. It makes you realize you can't abuse the fact of having this over plentiful amount of fruits and vegetables. Yeah, reducing that food waste right mm -hmm. down, trying to use everything. That's the most important thing to me, food waste. Um, Definitely. So so what happened then after that? So you, you jumped up in New Guinea, you spent yeah. a long time on the boat. Right. I was about nine months on that boat and just for my mental health and well-being, um, I got off that boat and I staged in a restaurant in Bali for a few weeks and I really enjoyed that. Uh, I wasn't able to get a work visa in time and then I realized I kind of wanted to go back to restaurants and take a little break from yachting and learn things that I wanted to, um, that I felt like that wasn't truly uh, knowledgeable. Yeah. So I went into baking. I went to uh, work in a Michelin star restaurant in oh, the wow. pastry. Doing pastry. Yeah. yeah, just to get really inspired. I think a lot of us are hot chefs, but um, you know, we're not pastry chefs. Mm -hmm. And though I do have a background uh, from education in pastry, you know, I wanted to get more involved in that, you know, in a professional way. Yeah. So that would just make me a stronger chef and so bring went, a lot more. You went to, to a Michelin table. star place uh, mm -hmm. and in California, doing... which was a phenomenal place to live because one of my favorite chefs growing up, Thomas Keller, oh, yeah. he has a restaurant there and per um, se, right, isn't it? Or was French no, Per se, that? per se is in New York, yeah. And yeah. he has a restaurant in um in Napa Valley, the French laundry. French laundry, yeah. Yeah, that was just down the street. So um Napa Valley is a great place because I'm a strong believer in farm to table. Mm -hmm. And that's truly the place that you want to be. It's very inspiring, you know, just be around all the organic vegetables and fruits. And my restaurant, I would actually go with the hot chef um, to the market and to, um, to go shopping with him. And that was a phenomenal experience. Fantastic. How long did you do that? Do you feel the pressure? Um, Michelin star is very high level. You know, right? now that you mention it, this is another thing I want to touch on is, you know, I have been in restaurants before where it was abusive, where I've had pans thrown at me. And especially being a female chef, you know, we have to, we have to really take it on the chin a lot. Yeah. But, um, he was such a calm, calm chef. You know, he, he was on the hot side. I was in the pastry. But just to see him work and having that Michelin star that I believe he's had it for over six, seven, eight years now. Um, and he was so calm and so peaceful with people that you know, it made me realize as a chef, I don't need to have all that. You know, it can be high energy, but a high energy 
positive way. Yeah, no you know, less you don't have stress to and yell. Yeah. yeah. And be abusive to people. But you that know? was the thing, though, back then, right? In oh, the, yeah. Yeah, well, in the yeah. 90s, it was Gordon Ramsay and people yeah. screaming at each other. And yeah. But that was, I think, one of my biggest influences was working with this chef and him just being kind to everyone and respectful. So how do you, how do you, um, do you have like a, a way of dealing with the stress nowadays? Do you have rituals that you do, you meditate? Yeah, um, I wake up in the morning and I'll meditate for a good 10, 15 minutes. Um, I have a gratitude list that I always go through as soon as I wake up. I think it's important to, you know, let the universe know that you are aware of what's happening and so you some how gratitude, grateful. some yeah. affirmations some affirmations and, and that's what you meditate on uh i chant um and then like that's when i start my day and i always exercise that's the most important thing for me is to wake up and exercise thanks for so. tuning in to another episode of behind the line with chef danny davis thank you Thanks for tuning in. See you next time for more Sheffy content on Triton News.